What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. Basically, in this video, you'll see how to mount a cloud storage platform as a removable drive on your computer as if it were a USB. You'll also see how to create client-side encrypted folders on those cloud storage platforms, giving you ultimate control over your personal and sensitive files. You'll see how to mount those encrypted folders as removable drives once again. And finally, you'll see how to sync your files on your local computer with a cloud storage platform using the same software and possibly even into said encrypted folder, which is basically why I created this video as I'm using that last bit mainly in my day-to-day -day life. In today's video, I'll be showing you OneDrive, but of course this program does work with Google Drive and a plethora of other cloud storage platforms. So you may be asking me, why do you want to encrypt your data before uploading it to a cloud service? Well, assume this, you upload your data to a cloud service, they promise the world's strongest encryption, and who knows, maybe they do actually offer the world's strongest encryption. What does that protect you from? Well, it protects you from someone who walks into a data center, steals a hard drive, plugs it in, and expects to see your data on it, or of course gains access to the server in some other way. But the odds of that are incredibly low, especially compared to someone getting, say, your password, logging into your account, and being able to view all of your data as if it was plugged into their computer directly. If you were to encrypt your data on the client side before sending it to the server, all they'll have access to is a bunch of mumbo jumbo. I'll give you an example right now. If I simply open up my OneDrive, which you'll be seeing later in this video as well, you'll see something like this here. I have a documents folder over here, and I possibly have a file inside of it. I have possibly pictures, screenshots, etc., etc. And if someone were to log into my, say, OneDrive account, this is what they'd see. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing you this folder over here, my backups folder, 70 gigs in size. Someone logs into my account maliciously, opens up the backups folder, and they see a randomly named folder. Inside of it, they see a bunch of other randomly named folders and a bunch of randomly named files. Opening up any of these will result in absolute nonsense that doesn't do anything. This is why it's very important to encrypt your personal or sensitive data before sending it to a cloud server. If I had a file filled with passwords here and you got access to it, you could do absolutely nothing to it. But if I uploaded it to say this PDF over here, somebody could click on it and they can see the passwords to all of my different websites. Pretty bad. Right, so with all of that out of the way, how do we get to setting this up? And how do we get it to sync to a cloud platform of our choice? Well, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to install and use rclone, which is an open source piece of software. It's this over here. You may have heard of this before, and previously I did too, but it seemed way too confusing to get set up until I actually looked at it properly and decided to dive right into it. It's super simple, and I got that set up basically within three or four lines of code, and I've got files that I can open up, one to back up my entire computer to this encrypted folder over here, and one to mount that folder as another drive on my computer as if I had just plugged in a USB with all of my sensitive data on it, even though it's stored in the cloud as complete random nonsense that people can't do anything with. That's what makes this tool pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, you need a cloud platform that's supported by rclone, and you can see a list over here. Head across to rclone.org or click the link in the description down below and look to see if your platform of choice is supported here. Of course, you do have custom FTP if you have your own web server, etc., etc. But for me, I'll be using Microsoft OneDrive. So let's get to setting this up. If you get confused with the actual setup, you'll see a home button as well as a config button next to the platform of your choice on our clone, showing you exactly how to set it up and the steps that you need to follow. So if you get lost, this is a good place to start. But before we get there, let's actually download our clone and see what we need to do. At the very top of the page, you'll find a downloads button and you'll find this link over here in the description down below. Simply select the correct platform. I'm running Windows on a 64-bit PC, so I'll click the download here. Of course, if you're running something different, click any of these other links. Once the zip finishes downloading, click it to open it up and we'll be extracting this folder into a safe place like our desktop. Doesn't really matter where you put it, just put it in somewhere accessible. I'll open up the folder and inside of it we have this here. There's a readme file, you can go ahead and scroll through if you're curious, but it does go pretty in depth with some commands, etc, etc. I'm not going to be touching on this, all I'm going to be doing is showing you exactly what you need to do to get OneDrive set up and of course an encrypted folder inside of it. If you'd like to see me do this to other platforms as well, do make sure to leave a comment down below or at least follow along with this guide as close as you can, swapping out the platform for your platform where necessary. All you have to do here is click at the very top over here in the file path and type in CMD then hit enter. That'll bring up a command prompt window as such. 
Now, because I've already got the setup on my main computer, I'm over here in the Windows sandbox, so I can show you a fresh install from the start. I've extracted the R clone folder over here that we just downloaded, and I'm able to open it up if I wanted. But of course, you'll see it's a command line tool that needs to be run from the command line. Anyway, we'll get there in just a moment. There's one extra thing that we need before we go ahead and start using the software if we'd like to mount a cloud folder like a USB. This is something that'll make life incredibly easy later, so let's go ahead and get it sorted out right now. In the description down below, you'll find a download link for WinFSP. Simply click Download WinFSP Installer, click Run or Save, and then when it downloads and opens up, follow along with the installer steps. So it's basically Next, Next, Install, wait for it to finish, and then Finish. Now that we've installed this, we'll be able to mount cloud folders as drives on our computer. Cool. Let's get straight to setup. First of all, to actually interact with our clone, at the very top in the folders path, click here, type in CMD, and hit enter. Any commands that we'll be running in our clone will do by typing in our clone space followed by the command. The main command for our clone is our clone config. Hit enter, and it'll be dropped into a menu that looks something like this. Just get used to entering commands here, as you'll see something like this with a blinking cursor next to it where your commands will go and you'll see a bunch of prompts above it, followed by a question right above that. So to begin, we're going to be making a new remote. A remote is basically a cloud platform or a platform that our clone interacts with. So I'm going to be making a new one. I'll hit N and hit Enter. I'll give it a name. I'd like to keep this to something short and simple. So for OneDrive, I'd call it, say, OD. This is what we'll be interacting with later. Remember the name here. After hitting enter, you'll get prompted with a huge list of all of the platforms that this program supports. Simply look for the platform of your choice. In my case, it's Microsoft OneDrive, code 26 or OneDrive as such. You can enter either the text OneDrive as above or 26. I'll be entering OneDrive. After hitting enter, depending on the platform, you'll see a different login technique. If you're using OneDrive, you'll be prompted for an OAuth client ID. Usually it's recommended to leave it blank and that's exactly what we'll be doing as we'll let the program do everything for us unless you know what you're doing. So client ID, leave blank and hit enter. Client secret, leave blank and hit enter. And now we need to pick what platform it is. So it's OneDrive and it's simply global. It's not specifically for US government, Germany or the Azure cloud over here for China. It's simply the global OneDrive. I'll enter global or one and hit enter. Then we see a prompt if we'd like to edit the advanced config to which I'll say N for no and hit enter. Do we want to use auto config? Y for yes and I'll hit enter. Then it'll open up a web page as such asking me to sign into Microsoft. This is the first time I'm signing in on this virtual machine over here. So I'll probably need to confirm it via email, but let's go ahead and do that now. There we go. I've now signed in, success. You can close it and head back to our clone. After closing your browser, you'll see that this window has progressed. Waiting for code, got code. Of course, I'll have to blow what's above over there. Anyway, I'm simply using Microsoft OneDrive for personal or business. I'm not using SharePoint or anything else. So I'll either enter OneDrive again or simply one and hit enter. Here we go. Now it'll give me a list of possible drives on the cloud that I can use. OneDrive only has one, the personal drive, so I'll enter zero, which is the first drive over here, because computers start counting from zero, and I'll hit enter to select the correct drive. Then found drive root of type personal, URL, etc., etc. Is that okay? Yes is the default, so I'll enter Y and hit enter. Then we get a huge long token over here, which I'm definitely gonna hide from this video, as it'll give you access to my OneDrive account. Is it okay? Y for yes, and I'll hit enter. Then we get back to the screen over here. I'll simply scroll down a bit. Basically, it's listing the current remotes, which are the remote drives that we've added. The remote drive OD of type OneDrive is the one that we've just set up and linked to my account. Let's go ahead and do something fancy with this. Let's mount my existing cloud storage as a USB on my computer. So I'll head across to the My Computer tab over here so you can see exactly what happens. Inside of our clone over here, now that we know exactly what drive we're gonna be interacting with, I'll type Q and hit enter to exit out of our clone. And after it's closed, I'll be entering a new command here. In this case, our clone space mount space followed by the remote's name, which in my case was OD, short for OneDrive. That's the first thing that I entered into the console. So OD colon space, and then followed by the drive letter I'd like to give it. In this case, I'll give it say X colon. 
Just make sure it's not an already used drive letter. After hitting enter, if you installed that WinFSP software that I mentioned earlier, it shouldn't give you this error over here. I think this is possibly giving me this error as I'm currently using a virtual machine. I don't think I need to run this as admin. Let me quickly check that. Yep, it seems to be because I'm on a virtual machine. But regardless, you may also see a notice like this. OneDrive root followed by a VFS cache mode, writes or full is recommended for this remote as it can't stream. If you use a cloud platform that doesn't support streaming, then it's a good idea to enter this command as well in our previous mount command. But let's quickly skip that step and head back to my actual computer so I can show you what this does. So heading back to my actual computer, let's open up CMD again and I'll type in R clone space config. Here we go. OD OneDrive. There's another one down here, but we'll be getting there in just a moment. I'll quit out of it with Q and I'll be entering the same command. R clone mount OD colon space X colon. And I'll head across to my, my computer so you can see what changes over here. I'll put it there. There we go. After hitting enter, I've got a password on my config, so I'll enter that here. Correctly, that is. And you can see here the same notice that we saw earlier. If I can't type anything, I'm still in the program. As you can see here, it's telling me it's a good idea to define VFS cache mode as either write or full for this cloud service. And it says the R clone service has been started. And as you can see over here, I have an ODX folder. Opening this up, you'll see my OneDrive contents as it is on the website. The backups folder should be fully encrypted as it is. You can't do anything with the data in here. And the OneDrive PDF over here should simply open up with my PDF reader as soon as I open it up. There we go. It's displaying exactly as it would on the website, though this PDF reader seems to be rather slow. Anyway, I'll close out of this and head back to my command prompt over here. To actually close the service and dismount this drive, all you have to do is simply close the command prompt window or hit control C to end the task that's currently running. As you can see, our clone service was stopped and the drive disappeared over here. Let's quickly fix that VFS cache error. I'll hit up to get to my previous command and in here, I'll go ahead and add hyphen hyphen VFS hyphen cache hyphen mode space either full or writes up here right before the drives over here. I don't think it quite matters where you put this just as long as it's somewhere in the actual launch command over here. After hitting enter this time, entering my password, you'll see the R clone service was started and the X drive should pop up over here exactly as it did before. And I think it should be a bit faster than it was previously, which it sort of seems to be definitely seems to be. Anyway, now we've successfully mounted our cloud service as a new drive on our computer. Let's get to the important part, the encryption part. For this, I'll head back to my virtual machine over here. So heading back to this window over here, let's type in our clone config and you'll see that we're back to here, just having OD. Let's go ahead and start creating an encrypted folder on this cloud service that we can mount as another drive. What we're gonna do is create a new remote by typing in and hitting enter. For the name, I'll give it something unique. I'll enter ODE so I know it's the OneDrive encrypted folder. That's the same thing as I've named it on my main computer. I'll hit enter and we see a huge list of things here once again. This time what we're looking for is this one over here, crypt number 11. Of course, yours may be different. You may want to enter just crypt. So C-R-Y-P-T and I'll hit enter. Then you'll see this here, remote to encrypt or decrypt normally should contain a colon and a path. So my remote path to directory. What I'm gonna do is create a new folder on the OneDrive server that contains all of the encrypted files from this folder over here. So enter a string. It's gonna be working on the OD colon, which is my OneDrive remote we defined earlier up here, as you can see. And inside of my OneDrive, I'll go ahead and create a new folder automatically called say test video as such. I'll hit enter. And you'll see this here, how to encrypt file names, enter a string value or press enter for the default of standard. So we can choose standard to encrypt the file names or we can choose obfuscate, which is a very simple file name obfuscation, or we can choose to not encrypt file names at all, only as a .bin extension. For me, I'd like people to not have any clue what they're looking at when they're looking inside of my cloud service. So I'll enter one for standard and hit enter. Then we can choose if we'd like to encrypt folder names. I'll choose one for true and I'll hit enter. 
Then we get to the password phase for this encryption. So what we're gonna do here is enter two passwords, preferably that are both different and hopefully very secure as they'll be protecting your files. So do I want to enter my own password? Yes, I want to enter my own password. I'll hit Y and then enter. I'll enter the password here. For this video, I'll make it something simple. Then I'll hit enter and type it in again to confirm it. Then we see password or passphrase for salt, optional but recommended. We can choose to leave it blank, which isn't the best. We can generate a random one or we can enter a second different password, which I highly, highly recommend. I'll hit Y, hit enter and I'll enter a second password. And another time and I'll hit enter. Then we get to the advanced config to which I'll say N for no and hit enter. Then we see ODE type crypt remote is inside of my OneDrive directory under the test video folder. File name encryption standard, directory name encryption true, password one, password two, both encrypted. Is this correct? Y for yes and I'll hit enter. There we go. We now have OneDrive OD and my ODE, which is my encrypted folder inside of the OneDrive server up here. Let's quit out of it and let's get to mounting my encrypted folder. To do this, I'll have to show you on my PC again as I can't mount on this virtual machine. So I'll go back out of the OD folder over here, dismount it, hitting Control C to stop the program and we're back to here. If I enter our clone config, enter my config password, you'll see that I've already got an ODE here but this is my personal one that points to the backups folder rather than the test video folder that we just created. So this is also something you can do if you'd like to install this program and use it on a second computer. If you'd like to add an existing remote file or folder, simply add a new one here into the config. Name, I'll enter something unique like say video and I'll hit enter. Then the type is crypt and I need to give it a folder. If I have a look inside of my OneDrive directory using the internet, you can see the folder doesn't actually exist, but that's fine. We can still point to it. I'll go ahead and enter the cloud service, which was OD colon for OneDrive in my case, and I'll enter the folder name, which I'm pretty sure is case sensitive, or at least it should be. So the folder that the files are in is test video as such. Then I'll hit enter. Then we'll choose the exact same settings that we chose previously. So standard file name encryption, encrypt file directories, Yes, enter my own passphrase and I'll enter my password here, the same as I did previously, twice. Then I'll also enter my own salt. So I'll hit Y, enter, and I'll type in my salt password that I entered earlier. Would I like to edit the advanced config? No, is this okay? Yes, and enter. Now we're done. We put it over here. Let's get to mounting it. To mount our encrypted folder, all we have to do is quit out of our clone with Q and I'll type in our clone mount space followed by the drive's name, which in this case was video colon. And on my virtual machine over here, it was previously ODE, just keep that in mind. And I'll enter the drive letter. In this case, we'll mount it to say Z colon. And I'll hit enter. I'll enter the password for my config, which we'll get to later. And you should see that the folder is mounted in just a moment. Of course, it's complaining about the VFS cache thing again. So I'll hit control C to stop it, up to my previous command, and I'll enter it here. VFS cache modes, full, and I'll hit enter to mount it again. Of course, I've mistyped something. There we go, should now be mounting. Cool, it's now started and the folder should appear here. I can open it up and it's blank as expected. I'll go ahead and open up my OneDrive in a web browser as well over here. Refreshing the folder, you can see that there's still no test video folder in here. That's fine. Let's get to creating a file, say a text document, tests. And I'll enter, hello, this is a test. I'll save it with control S and immediately you can see a new folder has appeared on OneDrive, the test video folder. Opening this up, you can see another file inside of it, which is our text file here. It's 69 bytes big. Opening up the text file on my PC, you can see it's only 21 bytes. Don't worry about this too much. Encryption will add a little bit of extra storage that's used, but it will really be negligible, especially compared to trading off a tiny bit of space for security. I'd much rather have security over a tiny bit of space. Let's download this text file and let's put it in the same folder and give it the correct extension of .txt. So previously our file said, hello, this is a test. What about the one that we just downloaded? Well, as you expected, our clone followed by a bunch of nonsense. Awesome, it's encrypted as we had hoped. 
So of course, anything that we put in this now attached drive over here, which is this folder here, will simply be uploaded to our OneDrive server, or whatever server you have it on, and it will be encrypted. You can see over here, this little encrypted text file that we just downloaded has been re-uploaded and is a little bit bigger. A perfect example of how this works. Cool, so we've now got it mounted as a USB. How do we start backing up to this folder here? Well, first of all, let's back out of it. I'll move this OneDrive folder across. As you can see, deleting a file deletes it off the server as well, which is good. Before we get to automatically syncing files and making backups, etc., let's go ahead and quickly touch on what that password was that I'm entering. For this, I'll head back to my virtual machine. So basically, if someone were to gain access to my computer and they checked in the rclone folder, they'd immediately get the key that I use automatically to log into OneDrive over here, as well as any other cloud platforms. With that key, they can use it exactly how I used it, where they can simply just open up rclone, put the key in, and boom, they have full access to my account and all the files in it. It's a very good idea to put a password on this. So I'll enter rclone config, and let's go ahead and type in a command here. You can see S to set configuration password. After doing this, I'll click add a password, A, and I'll hit enter. Then enter a new password for this configuration. I'll enter the password, enter it again, and there we go. Your configuration is now encrypted. If I quit with Q and Q again, the next time that we run R clone, you should see something a bit different. So R clone config, you'll see that I'm prompted for the password. If I enter the correct password, we get into the account and we see all of our cloud servers over here that we command and do everything with as we'd hope. Awesome. Now that we've got that out of the way, I can close this virtual machine. Let's get to automatically syncing data. So there's different ways of doing things and I'd highly recommend checking out the rclone help documentation if you get lost anywhere along the way. For this, I'll be using rclone sync, but there is also an rclone copy. There's a slight difference between the two, our clone copy as such basically copies the source to a destination and doesn't transfer unchanged files. So basically, if you change files, it'll sync with your server, yes. But if you delete files off of your computer, they won't delete from your server if you're using our clone copy. If you use our clone sync instead, the help documentation defines it as the destination is updated to match the source, including deleting files if necessary, doesn't transfer unchanged files. Doing this is probably the best if you'd like to maintain a backup of whatever you have on your local computer with the server. If you'd like local files that are deleted to not be removed from your cloud storage, use copy instead of sync. So this one's a bit different to the other commands. Basically, we enter our clone sync, then we enter a folder that we'd like to copy from our local computer to whatever remote followed by a folder. So for this, I'll quickly check the config to see my available remotes which in this case is OneDrive, my personal OneDrive backup folder, and the one that we created for this video. I'll be using the video one in this example. I'll clone sync, and I'll enter a local file. Let's go ahead and create a new folder on my desktop to sync to the server. I'll put some files in here. So there we go, I've now placed some files into this new folder 10 on my desktop. You can see I've got a couple of things here that total to about 130 megs. Let's sync whatever is in this folder here to a folder on our cloud server. What I'll do is I'll copy the folder path to the very top and we'll head back to our command prompt window. Our clone sync inside of quotation marks. I'll paste in the address over here, either with right click or control V. So our clone sync this folder over here and would like to put it into, say my unencrypted OneDrive. So I'll say OD colon and then I'll enter a folder that I'd like to put it in. So I'll call it say temp sync. After doing this, I'll hit enter, enter my password, and the transfer should start immediately. The only way that we know this is through our task manager by looking here. In a moment after it scrubs through all of the files, you should see that it's sending a large amount of data to the server. Here we go, sending 43 megabits per second, and it's uploading the files, but we don't really know the progress of anything that's happening here. Why is that? Well, I'll hit control C to cancel it and close out of it. We need to enter a couple of commands here to see everything. I'll hit up to go back to my previous command, and right before I enter the folders, I'll add another space, and I'll be typing things in here. This is where we previously entered something special. Anyway, for this, I'll be entering hyphen hyphen stats hyphen log hyphen level space in all caps notice. This will turn on logging and only show notices. Then I'll hit space hyphen hyphen stats, and I'll enter space 2s. So every two seconds, we'll get statistics from our clone space hyphen hyphen transfers 
space followed by a number lets us choose how many concurrent uploads we'd like to do. I'll say maybe five. You can of course set this higher or lower depending on your internet speed and computer. These are usually the only ones that I add so far. I don't add much else. Anyway, from here, let's go ahead and hit enter, enter our password. And this time you should see something a little bit different. It only showed us one status, which was basically telling us that yes, the files have been uploaded and things are working as expected. You would have seen a bit more if we had to actually upload the files again. Opening up my OneDrive over here, heading back to the home directory, you can see a new folder called temp sync. Opening it up, here's all of the files inside of it, and I can view them on the internet if I'd like. But just remember that we uploaded this to our unencrypted folder, so everything in here can be opened by anyone. Let's go ahead and add it to our encrypted folder instead. So I'll hit up and I'll change it from OD to our encrypted folder, which could be ODE, or in this case, I called it video. I'll hit enter, enter my password again. And this time you should see a bit more info than previously. When it eventually gets started, you'll see something like this, the files that it's currently transferring, as well as the file sizes, the transfer speed, etc., etc. And eventually it'll tick through until it's done. Something that you can do here is lower the size of the window to basically match whatever you see on screen. Doing this will help you see a little bit better. It'll tick through as such, simply updating this little bit rather than distracting you with a whole bunch of text above it. Though that's of course up to user preference and only something that you can do. In my case, it's something that I do do as it's a bit easier than looking at all of the stuff over here as such. Anyway, now the files should be successfully uploaded. If I have a look at my OneDrive here and head into the test video folder that we just added files to, you'll see a new folder inside of it, which is because we basically told it to create a folder called temp sync and sync this folder into it. This one over here is temp sync and here's all of our files in it. Let's go ahead and mount this directory. Our clone mount, I'll enter the same VFS cache mode full and I'll enter the address, which is video colon space followed by the drive letter, which I'll set to X. Opening up a new file browser, put it to the side, hit enter, enter my password, and you should see that it pops up over here in just a moment. Opening it up, we have a temp sync folder and inside of it, we have all of the files that we just uploaded to the server. After a short while, you'll see the previews for everything appears. And if we open up, say the image over here, you see it opens up properly. Everything works as hoped. Awesome. Of course, to dismount it, you can just hit Control C, close the window, and it'll dismount from your computer, such as unplugging a USB. That's all very cool and nice to use, but you may not want to type things into this console every time you want to use that software. So what else can we do? Well, we can automate it. Let's go ahead and open up the R clone folder over here, and we'll be making two new batch files inside of it. A batch file is basically a folder containing commands that's run inside of command prompt. So I'll make a new text document, which I'll call mount.bat, and I'll get rid of .text at the end. Click anywhere, and yes, you can see file extensions by clicking view at the very top and making sure that file name extensions is checked. I'll right click it and click edit. Now we're gonna enter the commands to mount a folder here. What was it? Well, it was simply our clone mount VFS cache mode, full or writes, followed by the remote, which in this case is video colon, followed by the path. I'll enter say X, save. And a good idea is to create a new line, which you enter pause on. Basically when this command finishes at the very top, it'll close the window and it'll vanish. However, if it were to crash, the exact same thing would happen. If we enter pause, as soon as we close out of the program, it'll ask us to press any key to continue before closing completely. That way we can see errors that appear on the screen. If we go ahead and run this over here, you'll see it pops up, asks us for our password. And upon entering the password, you should see that it appears on my computer over here. There we go. We can now access the files in it. Awesome. Let's go ahead and make a new file for syncing. So right click, new text document, and I'll be calling it sync.bat. I'll right click, edit, and inside of here, we'll be entering our sync command, which was our clone sync stats log level notice stats every two seconds transfers, I'll say five, and we can enter other commands like say retries five. So as soon as the file fails to upload, it'll retry uploading five times until it eventually gives up. This is pretty much unnecessary. You can have it at say two or whatever, or you could completely skip the step. Then I'll enter the folder names once again. So it's this desktop folder over here and I'll be syncing it into, I think it was video followed by temp sync as such. I'll save it and once again enter pause. 
upon running this file over here, it should immediately ask us for our password, which upon entering will start the syncing process to OneDrive using the command right above it, which it is. Everything inside of the file matches what's already on the server, so nothing happens. Let's go ahead and say duplicate this file here, open up the sync again, password, you can see it's already syncing this file over here and it should be done any moment now. There we go. As you can see, press any key to continue. Boom, it's done. If you remove that pause line, as soon as it's done, it'll just close completely. Whatever your preference, you can do here. So in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to make these automatically start up with your computer or get them to run every, say, six hours. If you'd like to see how to do that, make sure to let me know in the comments down below and I'll show you how to do that. But basically, whatever way you choose, you'll be using whatever commands you have in these files up here to do whatever you'd like. Of course, there's tons more that you can do with R-Clone. This is purely just scratching the surface and it's a really simple getting started guide for OneDrive and R-Clone and encrypted folders. If you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, that's about it for this really long video. Hopefully I can shorten it up quite a bit as the recording was a solid 50 minutes. Thank you for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.